Hey guys and welcome back to Everyday AI. This week you're going to get a crash course in the last 100 years of artificial intelligence. This video is a collaboration with Canubis, otherwise known as Willie Rates, who is doing a series with a bunch of other YouTubers on what a bunch of different things were like 100 years ago, so definitely be sure to check out the other videos. It might surprise you to learn that people have been talking about artificial intelligence since the Middle Ages. However, it wasn't until the beginning of the 20th century that the actual development of AI seemed possible. Until that point, AI was based around the idea that human thoughts and actions could be mechanized, but we didn't really have the mechanisms to actually create them. Instead, we discussed AI in thought problems and creative writing like science fiction. We had developed calculating machines, or computers, in the late 19th century, but they were still pretty clunky and weren't quite ready for AI yet. A breakthrough came in the form of the Principa Mathematica, which was a math textbook written by Alfred Whitehead and Bertrand Russell in 1910. The book focused on applying rules, or what we now call logic, to mathematical reasoning at a basic level. And over the next several decades, mathematicians would attempt to use this work to answer the following question. Can all mathematical reasoning be formalized? The important conclusion that they came to for the purposes of AI was that all mathematical reasoning can be formalized, but anything outside of that, like human thoughts and actions, were a little more iffy. However, at the same time, neurologists had shown that the human brain was essentially a set of electrical connections that delivered all or one signals to each other, similar to the binary nature of programming. This led to the hypothesis that we might be able to construct an electronic brain by modeling the brain as a set of computations that involve binary impulses. The first neural network, called the SNARK, was developed in the 50s by Marvin Minsky at Princeton. Around the same time, we saw the debut of the Turing test, which hypothesized that if a machine had a conversation with a human and that human was not able to tell the difference between having that conversation with a machine and having it with another person, we can say that a machine has intelligence. Interestingly, until 1956, AI wasn't called AI. In fact, we didn't really have a name for it at all. But in 1956, Mincy and his colleagues organized the Dartmouth Conference, where they brought together mathematicians and programmers from the field and coined the term artificial intelligence. The next two decades are considered the golden years of artificial intelligence. That's right, the 50s through the 70s, not right now. People were developing AI chatbots, robotics, and generally applying the same basic algorithm to see if it could solve different types of tasks. Money was flowing in from industry and the government to figure out this research. Everything seemed great until the mid-1970s when AI hit a bit of a roadblock, which we call the first AI winter. What happened? Well, computers weren't that advanced and didn't have that much memory, so we hit the limit of our computational power pretty quickly. With that limit, we hit a limit on the types of tasks that AI could be used for. You couldn't use it for things like facial recognition or solving human-like tasks. And agencies and industry companies that had been funding AI began to redirect their money elsewhere as progress began to plateau. However, by the 80s, AI was hot again thanks to expert systems. Expert systems are AI algorithms that are trained on a very, very specific area of study or business, usually based on expert knowledge. These systems could be implemented in places like finance or medicine, to answer questions or deliver results about specific issues. Companies began using these systems as it seemed like it would improve productivity drastically and the money came flowing back in. However, AI went through a second winter in the late 80s and early 90s. This was both an economic winter and an existential one, interestingly enough. The majority of the economic market for AI was dominated by specialized hardware manufacturers who were developing computers that could be used to develop these algorithms but with the rise of consumer desktops through IBM and Apple, people didn't need that specialized hardware anymore, and so those companies went out of business. Government and industry funding dried up again because these expert systems they had implemented were expensive and costly to keep up to date. And existentially, the field debated over whether something needed to have a body in order to be intelligent, 
So we saw a rise in the use of robotics and the integration of robotics into AI research. As we've seen in basically my lifetime, in the late 90s and early 2000s, faster computers and increased access to incredibly large data sets allowed AI to take off again. To use buzzwords, deep learning and big data took AI from solving those simple geometric theorems to things like facial recognition and targeted advertising and language processing. Today, AI development continues to flourish at a pace where people are actually a little bit worried about how fast we're going. There are a lot of concerns around fairness and bias in AI since we have these large data sets that don't necessarily represent the people that we'd be using these algorithms on. And we're reaching the point where these algorithms can have real significant impacts on real human lives. There are also concerns that we won't be able to restrain artificial intelligence if it ever reaches a point where it is self-sufficient which is usually referred to as the singularity. However, if the last hundred years have shown us anything, it's that we're due for another AI winter. And there have been some people who have hypothesized that it's coming. The rise of big data and the access to information allowed AI to explode because we had enough data to train these really complex models. But now, having a ton of data doesn't necessarily make your model good. Instead, people are having to look at how they develop the models and the underlying math that they used to create better and more useful models, which has been hard. But unless someone develops an AI algorithm that can accurately predict the future, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. As usual, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about this topic, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You should also definitely check out Kanubis's channel and the other First 100 Years collaboration videos that should be coming out over the next couple weeks. And I will link his channel and that series either somewhere around here, but also in the description box. Otherwise, you can find me on these social medias. I always say that. There's really only one. Well, there's technically two. You can always find me on Twitter and if you want to see me go to the gym, you can find me on Insta. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.